Hi, it's Sam Burt here from Sample Library Review. I'm really excited today to be looking at the latest release from Performance Samples. This is a chamber strings library called Vista with a focus solely on legato articulations and sustains, and it also contains a harp. It's ideal for those sweeping romantic lines and gives a real classy larger than life sound. Jasper Blunk is the main man behind Performance Samples and in a market of so many excellent string libraries already out there, what they do is always refreshing. The basic ideology centers on playable libraries that enable a composer to infuse compositions with maximum realism and emotional impact with a minimum of fuss. It's achieved by being really selective in the exact players that are chosen and then extracting the samples from actual performance. These recordings are then edited together and scripted in innovative ways. The outcome is a very minimal interface and collections that focus on very specific articulations, instruments and end uses. Vista is the first foray for them into chamber size sections and features a number of unique touches such as the same note bow change repetitions, attack variations and an emotive slurred legato. Vista is a 10 gigabyte library using the NCW compressed files for the full version of Contact. There are five violins, four violas, three cellos, three basses, a harp, three violins at triple forte as an overlay, and a full string section as sustains. All of these derive from real performance recordings recorded in a hall. The individual sections feature legato and sustains with four dynamic layers from PP to FFF, there are two mic options, Close and Decker. It downloads via Continuata Connect, and the normal retail price is $339. Before we dive in deeper and look at the separate string articulations, I just wanted to play back a little piece that I made upon getting Vista. It's a good way of working out the tonality of the library, the little nuances, and how it all sounds together. This piece contains all the different patches that are in Vista, apart from a sketching patch, which is not as relevant for this composition. Fairly simple piece, but effectively shows off what you can expect from Vista. The first violins is five violins there. Second violins is a replicated patch of that because Vista doesn't come with its own second violins. We've got four violas, three cellos, three basses, and three violins with a triple forte as an overlay. This is one dynamic layer, and I've basically put the main melody up a whole octave there. And we've got a harp here for some flourishes. The velocities are mainly not used, 99% not used. However, they do come into play when we need to break the legato, maybe start a new phrase, and then they dictate how heavy the attack is. The modulation we're all familiar with using for strings, but you can really give it a good bit of movement with Vista, I found the PP to triple F, four dynamic layers that it has really work excellently. It helps you dial in plenty of emotion and drama. I've gone through with the expression control as well to accentuate some of that. The sustain pedal here, the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed, only happens when we've got the same note. So this is a same note rebo, which helps give a lot of realism to repetition samples. The only other thing to note really is the delay. The library has an inherent about 140 millisecond delay, just to allow for some realism in the legato and to make sure that the attacks aren't truncated. That's fairly simple to make sure that your MIDI is broadly on the grid where you want it. And then afterwards, simply, all you got to do is put some delay compensation in, make sure it's 140 milliseconds, and everything's going to be hunky-dory and on time. It's worth pointing out on that composition, you just heard that there is no external processing going on beyond a little bit of compression on the mix bus and also some oxygen inflated to bring the level up without limiting it. There's no EQ, individual channel compression, or reverb added. So that gives you a nice idea about how it sounds straight out of the box. 
We're going to dive in, have a little look at each individual instrument. We'll start with the violins. I'll spend a bit more time on this because on the violins, I'll take you through the interface, but the interface is the same for each instrument. I'll play a little bit for you first so you can get an idea about how it sounds and then we'll dig a bit deeper. I'm just noodling around there really, but it gives you an idea about the tonality of the violins, the depth of the room, and also how nimble it actually can be. Sounds a lot bigger than a chamber size section to me. Quite grand, that romantic feel really coming through. I've got both the mics on at the moment here, both the Close and the Decker. Slightly different from some of the other performance samples libraries which have uh, a wide mic, and also some of them have a first chair. I didn't really miss it, to be honest. I think some people may miss that degree of control, but for this library, it seems to work fine with these two. I'll play a little bit of each so you can hear the difference in quality between the close mics and the decker mics. Start with the close. Both of those sound great. The close is close enough that you can hear the detail but not the texture of the rosin on the strings. I like to dial in a little bit of that alongside the hall for some extra definition. You can hear also on them a, a few artifacts. There's a few kind of backgroundy sort of sounds which you won't hear on some other libraries which are a lot more polished but performance samples um, makes no apologies for this and in fact uh, lists that it's not a particularly clean library on their website. I think if anything it kind of adds to the quality of the realism that's inherent in this. Any of those sounds when you're in a full mix kind of get buried anyway so you really don't hear them under the microscope so to speak. We have a legato button on off, there's also a key switch to change that off and on during a composition if you need. A dynamic CC, which can be configured to be something different from the mod wheel. The legato off means we can play sustains. They can be good for more pad writing, but really what you're getting in this library are quite beautiful, smooth note transitions. It's a slurred legato, so it happens on the same bow stroke as opposed to other legatos, which may happen when the bow changes direction. This gives it a nice lyrical yearning type quality. And I find that breaking up the legato can add a little bit of realism as well, so we don't have this magical infinitely long bow. The attack threshold is quite a novel addition to this library which you don't find on lots of other competing products. Here you can set where the different attacks come into play. This does not matter at all if you're playing legato 
because it's just basically ignored. But when you stop playing the legato and you're starting a new a new phrase or you're starting your piece off, then it is important because that's going to give you the feeling of a harder attack or a softer attack. So I'll just play a couple of notes with um, a soft and then a hard attack so you can get a feel for exactly how that sounds. It's also interrelatable with the mod wheel. So you're going to hear, if the mod wheel's fully up, it's going to be accentuated, which is great because if you're playing something soft and you have a, a hard attack, you want it to match where, where the mod wheel is. So this is where the mod wheel, we'll put the mod wheel full whack and kind of give it a hard attack and then a soft attack. You can hear that kind of bite into the tone when it's a harder attack. And the nice thing is you can you can easily configure this however you want, according to your playing style or how your keyboard is kind of set up and how it works nicely. And with the mod wheel a little bit lower, same kind of thing. That's the hard attack with the mod wheel a bit down. And, and uh, mod wheel down and a soft attack. There's far less in it when you get to that stage, if anything, really. So it's it's dependent on the mod wheel, as I said, but a really nice extra thing to have in this library and gives it much more playability. The other thing I really like about this is the repetition notes as well. So this is where we are going to be changing the bow, but we're staying on the same note. That's activated by pressing down on the sustain pedal. And if I didn't press down, we'd get this. So kind of the same sample again and again and again. I'll play a bit higher up and show it off. It's a real emotional type of sound when that, you know, that note bleeds over into the next one. Really well done and well implemented. Releases can be turned on and off. Probably not something you're going to need every day of the week. Without the releases, it sounds a bit not as good, basically. Straight cut off. With them on, we can also reduce the amount of, or the volume, should I say, of the release. So if it is a little bit much for you and you want it a little bit tamer, it's easy enough to do. Dial it right up if you want. A lot of that kind of room sound after the note has finished playing. I find anything past about zero to be honest starts to become a little bit unnatural. So by default, I wouldn't see myself anyway changing that too much. That's by in terms of the interface. If we press this little B square at the bottom, we get this extra little selection of parameters here. Now, on the website, it does state that there's compression of the, the velocity ranges here don't work as well for um, legato, but I'll show you anyway, just so you get a kind of idea about what they do. So. That's your normal kind of PP to triple forte. Now, if we kind of compress that, we still get those dynamic changes under the hood that are happening, but the volume is more balanced between them. We can do the same as well for expansion, so we can make the change, the loudness, should I say, between the softest and the hardest dynamics a lot more apparent. There's also a similar control for compressing the high registers, so we play higher up. Brings the volume down of the higher notes. 
compared to where we had it before. That can be useful if you're finding that some of the high notes are just getting kind of too much. And we can do the same with the lows as well. So the complete opposite and have that effect. And there's a makeup gain there to count rack for any big differences in sound. And that's it. That's a performance sample interface. If those of you familiar with the type of instruments that they make will be really at home with this. I think it does everything you kind of want it to do. Yeah, we could have extra bells and whistles on it, but I'm one for just getting in and playing, and that's why these interfaces really make all the difference. I'll play a little bit more just to give you a last little look, uh, listen, should I say, at the uh, violins, of which there is five, it's worth pointing out. Here we've got the violas, there's four of these. Again, I'll play a little bit and then we'll have a listen to the mics and the attacks. Those are just gorgeous violas. It's hard to get violas sounding as good as that in sample libraries, I find. The violins, we have, I've heard plenty of great violins, plenty of great cellos. Violas all seem to be a slightly tricky thing to really get right, and those are quite beautiful. It kind of makes you want to write some you know, main melody lines, lead lines with violas when you hear it like that. We'll have a little comparison of the mics. This is with the close only. And Decker. And again, like the violins, I think the blend of them is where it's at. Just listen to them dynamics, just beautifully emotive.
We've got a good bit of vibrato on there, but it's not crazy. All pretty adept at the sustains. And for the attacks, Two varieties there, just give it that extra quality of being able to start a phrase with something that's a bit more in your face or a bit more gentle. The violas are generally pretty central and everything else is spaced according to traditional orchestral seating as you'll hear on some of the other instruments as well. That's about all there is to show for the violas, really. Again, we've got the same extra controls on the opposite page. It's worth noting as well, we can specify the individual outs of the different mics if you need, and there's panning on them as well. Though, unless it's for special effects, you're probably going to end up just leaving those where they are. I'll just play a tiny little bit more of the violas so you can hear them. And I'll play a variety of different stuff, including some of the repetition samples. Vista has three cellos. I'll play a little bit using lots of different techniques just to give you a flavour of what it's capable of.
the attacks there, the two variants I was playing, they're a lot more prevalent in the cellos than some of the other other uh, instruments. And I really like it. It's, it's kind of sharp. And, and then you can also play pretty quick stuff when it's not legato as well. <laughs> Whether you're going to do that, who knows? It's worked, it works best. I mean, this, this library is all about beautiful, sweeping, grand, legato type of lines. But, you know, it can do that reasonably well. And it's quick as well. Really quite nimble. Shouldn't you want to play the odd, fast little run or ostinato pattern? It's capable of it. That was with both of the mics blended if we just uh, mute the decker there and have a quick listen to a close mic of the cello. There's three cellos, by the way. definitely start to hear a lot of good detail in the cellos there. When we turn to the deckers, we'll get a nice roomy sound again. All right, down to the bottom. Sounds lovely down low. And the decker puts it more in position. It's, it's not hugely orchestral seat in terms of it's like massively one sided. If you did want to make it a bit more that way, I was I'm tempted to leave the decker where it is and instead bring the close. Uh, mics over to the right side and we kind of get a bit more definition in the stereo placement. Compared to putting it back in the middle. And this works with all the other sections as well, further over. It's a lot better way, I think, than kind of starting to bring that over. You get a, a different type of sound. When you pan the decker, which for my taste, not quite as sweet. So we've been through pretty much everything we need to go through on this. We'll have a little listen to this with the release volumes down as well. say the dynamic smoothness of this is just wonderful them low softest of softest tones are beautiful and the blend right up to the triple forte is magnificent when you're playing this type of music which Vista lends you to play that's what you need for that emotion that searing soaring glorious type of quality that it can give you Couple that with that legato, which is just super smooth, same bow type of thing. It's just a real nice match aesthetically. Also notice that the sounds are kind of moving all the time and it's this breathing quality 
that this collection has, which makes it quite special in my opinion. It kind of just pulls in and out and just feels like it's constantly moving like a real orchestra does. In part, this was done because of the active bow style of sampling that I used. On the website, there's a, there's a good explanation of exactly how it was done, but broadly speaking, there were the, the sustains were bowed with a kind of ebb and a flow to them, and then they were stitched together to get rid of some of the joins. That does then mean what's being constructed is this sustain, which is, has this kind of subtle movement all the way through it, which gives such kind of, I don't know, organic realism to how these samples sound. And then when all those are all played in a section and they're all kind of overlapping and doing their own thing, we get this glorious, beautiful type of effect. I play a little bit as well sustained on these, just so we can hear what that's like. dark and probably not what you're going to play with this library. It goes pretty loud but because it's a chamber it doesn't have, it's never going to have that, that massively epic sound which is great because you want it to sound powerful but not overly over the top if you like. Now we come to the last individual section which are the bases of which there's three and this is what we've got. It's a real bold bass sound, powerful but not bloated, and it blends really well with the cellos to have that nice solid bottom end. Some bass samples that I've got, they kind of just sound too too big, too bassy, and you can't hear enough of the actual instrument. These are really refined, beautifully played, beautifully sampled. Let's take a quick comparison of the mics. Here's the close. And Decker.
again, the blend is pretty nice. I quite like on the basis of the close dialed up a little bit there, because I do think it gives a real nice definition. Some of the same note bows here. And we've got that nice attack variation too. Again, the panning is not drastic, it's kind of quite subtle really. Close being pretty central, the decker. Slightly off to the right where it should be, and we could do the same as the cellos and bring that a little bit further across if you want to. The legato on these is very smooth for basses. Sometimes the legato on basses can sound a little bit lumpy, but this is about as smooth as you're going to get. I really do like that. Let's take the legato off. It's unlikely to kind of be playing sustained stuff with basses, but for the sake of completeness, let's have a quick listen. You just get that beautiful release again on all these samples. That's where the magic is, the end of phrases where you get that whole ringing through on the release and the quiet, softest articulations beautifully done. All adds to how emotive these strings can be. As well as the four main string sections, we've got a bonus folder of three other NKIs, which can help to add some finesse, some emotional impact to your chamber compositions. First we've got a violin section, a three strong violin section, a triple forte, and this is more of an overlay patch. It's just one dynamic layer, ideal for adding maybe an octave up or to just play in unison with the main line. Slide it underneath and it gives that kind of extra push, if you like. A little bit more intimate and here a bit more of the vibrato on this, with it just being three players, it's quite nice for that closer sound. When we go to the close mics you'll hear exactly what I mean. I'll play a little bit of it so you can get a taster.
that's the Decker mic, and I've just shown you a few of the attack variations there. You get a real stab <laughs> with this patch for sure. And with the close mics, so are them. We really can hear the string players almost as individuals. Then when we blend them a hole in, we can give a bit less of that maybe. Let's see, here we go. I really love this patch and it's part of the performance samples thought process that having this extra overlay patch and the experimentation that will have been done to decide whether to do it makes this library just that extra little bit special. If I add an intensity, an extra degree of emotion, this is really quite useful. And it's quite amazing how powerful it can sound, even on the lower velocities when we've got that um, triple forte type of thing. It's a nice option to have. For sketching purposes, there's a nice utility patch here, which is the full string sustains. So obviously no legato on these, but it's the whole... Um, string section from the basses up to the violins across the keyboard enabling you to play with two hands and to sketch out various ideas. And we can go a bit higher. Doesn't sound great when I'm playing with two hands because um, I can't get on the mod wheel. So we'll play just with one hand and a bit of mod wheel. A bit lower down so we're kind of hitting maybe the violas. A really useful patch to have and as you've got the other four beautiful patches probably not the one you're going to be using in the final version but as a workflow thing to sketch your ideas out and then break it out into the other component parts it's a really worthwhile addition as the icing on the cake we've got a beautifully sampled harp as well recorded in the same hall so it blends superbly with the chamber strings So without the sustain pedal, I'm going to put the sustain pedal down, we've got a bit more ring out. We can also opt to do this by pressing that button as well.
do pretty nice fast stuff with it as well. I really love the close mic on this one. That is just so intimate. It feels like I'm right there in the room. We combine that with a little bit of that decker. Bring that down a little bit so we're mainly close to the bit of the hall. That is a wonderful harp. We've got a good degree of dynamic control and a really bright attack. There is a touch of noise floor there, which helps retain authenticity, but some users may consider using some noise suppression software to combat that. My only slight bugbear with it is there's a bit of a delay in playing it. And unlike some of the other sample libraries that I had, like the Fluid Shorts, which I reviewed for sample library review, it doesn't have a little fader where you can kind of dial it back for ease of playing. And then once you've recorded your MIDI in to put back the milliseconds to say 140 and then you get that nice attack back. That would be a nice addition. Hopefully it might come in an update. It doesn't It's not a big deal. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. The main thing is it sounds beautiful and it combines so nicely with the chamber strings. And it's a really worthwhile extra thing to include in this pack. Vista exemplifies the unique sampling aesthetic pioneered by Jasper Blunk. We see the signature active bow sampling technique, four dynamic layers, slurred legato, rebo repetitions and two attack variations, all extracted from real performances. Like all of their products, Vista is, by design, a little rough around the edges, but for me it seems to add to the realism. Performance Sample's first chamber collection is recorded in the same hall as some of the other products, such as Oceania and Angry Brass Pro, and it sounds bigger and bolder than a chamber section. The full price is set at a quite professional level, considering you essentially only get legatos and sustains, but they are undoubtedly quite special. A great deal of research and development has gone into this and much thought regarding the exact players best suited for it, who are all handpicked for their individual tone and style. For more on the behind the scenes process of Vista, there's a very interesting blog on the Performance Samples website that's well worth checking out. The main limitations to Vista are you in the lack of second violins and only having two microphone options. The former is a shame, but might come later, who knows? For now, duplicating the main five violin patch and changing the mic blend and EQ in the mix is a decent workaround. Regarding the latter, during my time with it, I never yearned for more mics personally, though other users may miss the extra flexibility that they offer. I suspect they were omitted as it was felt like they did not add anything significant to the particular style and sound that performance samples were aiming for. The huge dynamic range coupled with key features, such as the smooth legato and active bow, means that Vista exhibits a degree of life and excitement that is just so enjoyable to use. The individual sections blend effortlessly and although sounding good in isolation, it is only when you combine them into a full string section that it becomes apparent how much the whole is far greater than the sum of its parts. Overall, I would say the great appeal of Vista comes from how it seems to breathe like a real orchestra, pushing and pulling with an emotional, dynamic flow that is hard to match with many other libraries. Thanks for watching this first look at Vista. Comment below as well, let us know what you think of Vista. Is it something that's going to compete with what you've already got? Is it something you definitely want on your shopping list? And what do you think of the Legato? Is it the best one out there? Or are there other contenders? Let us know below. Please like, share and subscribe. Check out our website as well, samplelibraryreview.com for all the latest reviews and the weekly deal compressor.